Today I'm going to continue on the Free Code Camp's Learn Basic CSS by building a cafe menu. Um, so step 71, notice how the thickness of the line looks bigger. Um, so the default value of a property named border width is one pixels for all edges around the HR element. So by changing the border to the same color, um, as you can see, the total height of the line is five pixels because it's three pixels here plus one pixels top and one pixels bottom. So if we change the height of the HR to be two, um, the total height will now be four pixels, as we can see. So it shrunk a little bit. So step 72, go ahead and add another HR element between the main element and the footer. So that's down here. We'll give this a HR. And if you remember, it's self-closing. So we pop that in and we can see our footer HR now down at the bottom. And there's, by the way, our link and our sort of footer items as well, the two P tags, one of them with an anchor tag inside. Perfect. So step 73, to create a little more room around the menu, add 20 pixels of space on the inside body element, element by using padding property. So if you remember, we do 20 pixels, and this applies to the top, left, bottom, and right. So that's 20 pixels there for each of them. Step 74, focusing on the menu items and prices, there's a fairly large gap between each line. So target all the P elements nested with, sorry, with the class named item, so it's this one, and set their top and bottom margin to be five pixels. So what we can just do is margin dash top, um, five pixels, um, margin dash bottom, five pixels, um, but a little sort of, not hack, but um, sort of CSS shorthand would just be margin. And when we specify obviously one value that will apply it to the top, right, bottom, left. But if we just want it to the top and bottom, we do five pixels and then zero for left and right. And as you can see, um, CSS is, because it's cascading style sheets, it, it kind of uses the, the last class um, that you've got in the list, depending on specificity, which I think we'll come to at a later stage. But essentially you can see here that if I change, let's say margin top to 50 pixels, nothing changes because we're actually using this class to style the P items within the item class itself. So actually what I can do is delete both of these. And let's see if that will allow me to continue. Yep, so there we go. So that's five pixels top and bottom and then zero left and right. And as you can see now, they're a lot closer together. So step 75, using the same style selector in the previous step, make the font size and items, sorry, font size of the items and prices larger by using a value of 18 pixels. So we'll do font dash size, 18 pixels. And there you go. You can see the font of those has increased. Step 76, change the margin bottom uh, sorry, changing the margin bottom to 5 pixels is great. However, the space between the cinnamon roll um, and the second HR does not match the space between the top HR and the heading sort of coffee elements, the H2 here. So add some more space by creating class dot bottom dash line and use sort of margin dash top 25 pixels. Oops. And that's going to add 25 pixels above the line and yeah, that should be okay. There we go. Oops, let's don't restart. Submit and go to next. So step 77, now add the bottom line class to the second HR element. So class equals bottom dash line. And now if I scroll down, we can see we've got that 25 pixel space. Uh, if I just take off one of the words, let's say, um, we don't have the space, same space there. So that's now been applied. So step 78, next we're gonna be styling the footer element. To keep the CSS organized, add a comment at the end of the styles.css with the text footer. Um, and if you remember, we can simply write a comment like so, and we do that. So it's a forward space, asterisk, and then at the end of the comment to close it off, asterisk forward slash, uh, sorry, yeah, forward slash um, at the start as well. So next challenge. 79, moving down to the footer element to make all the text have a value of 14 pixels for the font size. So let's target the footer and we'll do font dash size 14 pixels. There we go. I just need to correct the spelling there. And we can click enter. 
And then probably finally for this lesson, the default color of a link that has not been clicked on yet is typically blue. Um, and I should be able to show you that here. So you can see our visit, our website link is blue. Um, that's the default color when it's not clicked. And then normally when you click a link, it will turn purple. Um, so you might have seen that on other websites before. Uh, to make the footer link the same color, regardless if a link has been visited, you can use a type selector for the anchor element. So A and the color value will give black like so. And now you'll see that has changed to black just to match the rest of the text. So let's check that and we've passed. Perfect. Cool. So hope that helps. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.